Okay, kit review time. We have Rebels New Tool, uh, 130 second Supermarine Spitfire. This is the Mark II A. Um, uh, you know, I don't know. I wasn't expecting another kit, but certainly we've had uh, a lot of 109s recently, so I don't see why we don't need some more Spitfires. 20 pounds, so quite a bargain for this one. Usual thing, as you can imagine, we've got some pictures on the box and everything else. Looks like a very nicely painted one on there, which is a change. Okay, and usual, all the blurb all the way around it. Rubbish on the back. Okay, so in the box, which we haven't even opened yet, we have, We've got one, two, three, four bags of screws. Okay, but first of all, we'll have a look through the old instructions. So, decals and probably the bump sheet we'll look at in a moment. Um, usual thing, as you can imagine, as you think in here. Typical call outs for their paints uh, as you make your way through. So it doesn't say anything about federal standard colors and it is the trouble with all the Ravel paints that you have to mix these stupid concoctions up. Okay, working our way through, uh, we've got very limited uh, don't use one. So we imagine that uh, perhaps there isn't going to be too many versions of this coming out. Uh, but anyway, in with the cockpit. So usual thing, we've got a decal for the instrument panel, pretty much standard. Uh, all the parts going in. We've got the floor area framing and the top. Rotor pedals going into that system. As you can see, making your way through, pretty straightforward for your Spitfires. Okay, up into the actual main area, we've got the seat. Quite nicely detailed looking at it. The framework for the actual seat itself, uh, some of the equipment as it goes in. So it's actually building up quite nicely in this cockpit. Cockpit sides, putting those details on, as you can imagine all the way through. Tail wheel looks a little bit crude going in there. This box system then actually obviously goes in the front, remembering to put your spinner pipe through. Wheel wells, um, obviously got the inserts for them, are gonna go in, and then obviously placing it down to the fuselage. As you imagine, we've got separate control surfaces, but it doesn't look like they move, it looks like they plugged in, which is obviously something you could do, is just cut them and sort them out, put them in. Uh, same goes with the tail, with the rudder. We've got the wing tips on, so you might imagine we might get a clip version along somewhere along the line. Okay, and the parts going through. Exhaust stacks. Um, I say we'll have a look to see how detailed those are right the way through. We do have deployable flaps on there as we can imagine, so you've got flaps up or down. The oil cooler scoop going in there as we go through and then obviously the radiators on the wings. Okay, and going in, pretty much standard sort of Spitfire stuff. Okay, canopy goes on. Um, obviously I imagine it's open or closed. Uh, it's different. We'll have to look at this. It looks like you put the front part of the actual windscreen in and then the armoured glassing goes in afterwards. So I don't know if that's a separate part or this is a separate part, but we'll, we'll have to see if it's uh, how that actually works. I haven't seen that done that way before. Okay, aerials going in. The canopy, I presume you can have whichever we want. Apparently the blade goes in with a snap. <laughs> if things snap, I normally worry. Okay, and then it's using thread, obviously for doing your aerials at the back. Okay. And then, uh, who we got? 19 Squadron and uh, 65 Squadron markings, okay? You might sound, I'm not exactly excited about this. This is because I've been spoiled rotten over the years with things like Tamiya's amazing, you know, as far, as far as I'm concerned, stunning build. And then you've got other manufacturers, you know, like um, the Hobby Boss uh, one uh, and things like that. So I don't know, I feel like I'm a little bit burnt out with these. That said though, very, very nice decals, extremely nice decals actually, because they're so large, when you're looking at the round doors, you probably catch them on the camera, you can actually see how good they are because they are completely the same right the way across. You've got no graininess or difference in texture or anything across all of these. They're about the right type of shininess, as I call it. I would call them somewhat satin, which is perfect, i.e. they're not stupidly flat like other manufacturers, and they're not really glossy, okay? Um, the instrument panel, okay, that's very crude and boring, but you know, apart from that, the rest of it's all okay. You can read all of the, the actual stencil data, which obviously recently we were looking at kits you couldn't, uh, and everything else. So those decals are absolutely fine. No problem with those at all. Right, where do we get in the box? Where are we gonna start? Let's start with this one here. So, in bag one. Remember, this is only 20 quid, this kit. Um, so, 
although I say you shouldn't be expecting great things, but obviously it's still 20 quid, um, it is a 130 second uh, scale kit. All right. Now the first thing that jumps out and grabs me, um, I don't know if you're seeing it as well, but the riveting detail does look rather overdone. And it looks in a weird position, I don't know. Now I am not a Spitfire expert by any stretch of the imagination. It's not my area at all. It's just that this riveting just seems to be very heavy and lots of it. Now I imagine it did have lots of it, but really, it looks like it's just covered in rivets, okay. Um, but generally, it doesn't look too bad at all. Um, here we go, we can get the mold date. Uh, mold date, yeah, 2014. So it is definitely a, definitely a new tool kit. Okay, they're not the sharpest recesses in the world, but they are all complete. They do go all the distance. We've got a nice mixture of raised. We've got no sink marks at all on the outside of the kit, which is very, very nice. Um, generally the detail, although it looks overdone to me, if it is correct, it's beautiful, it's absolutely lovely. It's just not as sharp as a 120 pound Tamiya, but that's the difference, it's 100 quid extra. So for 100 quid extra, Okay, just a quick look onto the other side, looking pretty good. Um, as I say, I don't know, some of this um, detail just looks a little bit overdone and heavy to me, but I could be wrong. Uh, it does look nice, I've got no problems with that. All the ejector pins look like they're pretty much as you'd expect. So the wings, again, we're all stamped 2014, so it definitely is all new, okay? So this looks actually nicer. The wing actually looks a lot nicer than we were looking at before. It seems to be very, very nice. All the details are there. Certainly, hopefully the camera, one of the cameras is gonna pick them up and be able to see this detail. It is a lovely detail in there. Looking, all right, the inside of the wheel well is a little bit crude. Looks like there's a bit of tape there at some point. Okay, and everything else. I'm wondering about different guns and that by from the underside. There's some funny little marks in there in the plastic here. So I'm wondering perhaps we'll be getting slightly different things coming on, perhaps with blisters for the guns for later models. Okay, but again, quite a nice thing. It's got pretty good texture. You're going to be going over it flat. We've got no ejector pin marks in any areas where it's going to be a real problem, which is quite nice. Okay, the big one underneath. So again, as you can see, hopefully you see that detail really does look very very nice again we've got no problems with any of that at all all the panel lines run the distance none of them fade off to nothing all the riveting detail is exactly the same right the way through okay on the underside uh, all the ejector pins are nicely out of the way a little bit flash around the outside but again you know when we we're talking about it we just we just finished the tornado to be honest and it was the big thing without loads of flash on it, but you took that flash off, it made for an absolutely fantastic kit. So there we go, and in bag two. We have, okay, spinner. As you can imagine, it's a pointy thing goes on the front. Pretty nice, no sink mark in it, no nothing. That's all okay. Couple of air scoops, they're full length uh, type air scoop as well, so that's quite nice. Okay. Okay, we've got the, the bottom pan here uh, of the engine. Very nice, so we've got a mixture of raised and recessed details, as you can imagine, all in there. Um, the actual main gear, the actual wheels, you can see if I just drop this side camera in just a little bit tighter. Um, you can probably see very nice riveting detail all over these as we make our way through, and on these other ones as well. Admittedly, you've got a tiny little hole for the uh, the exhaust, but you could probably quite easily drill them out because they are hollow on the inside. So you might want to just drill these out. The actual oil cooler, as we said ourselves, is very nice because it is full length. Again, if you just to drill it out where the pin is, that will give you a nice sort of sense of depth and to look into those and everything else. So yeah, not bad at all. We've got no real flash to really worry about. There's tiny little bits, but you can't really call that. Okay, so we've got the instrument panel itself, as you can see just in here, pretty nice. We've got very nice detail around here for these sort of bulkheads as you go right the way through. We've got no problem with ejector pin marks. Okay, a couple of these little holes, you might be able to see them in here, they need opening up because quite frankly, they're closed on the inside. So you might wanna open them, but certainly looking at the instrument panel, very, very nice. And when you work your way around with all these small details, you know, all the way over it, we've got the flaps down there, they're all very nice. I can't see a problem with any of this. Absolutely lovely. Okay, all the parts, although they're soft, they're all there, they're all pretty good. Looking at the wings, the control surface is even, so we've got the wing tips. Um, we've got another bulkhead here, which you could probably just very easily open up 
all these areas and work your way through. And we've got the insides of the actual cockpit itself. So a couple of eject pins marks around here, but you're not gonna see them anyway. Okay, but definitely the control surfaces, you can see very nice ribbing detail on these, everything else like that. I don't know, might be a little bit heavy. Perhaps you sort of get in my drift now when I say these are just a little bit heavy about with all this ejector, you know, with them, here we go, catch them just like that. I don't know, jewelry's out. Control stick, quite a nice little touch there. That's not looking too bad at all. Okay, so we've got the last one, which is our wheels and the props. Okay, so imagine a duplicate, two duplicates. So down here we've got the rudder pedal uh, and the radiators. So as you imagine, we've just got two of those, pretty standard. And we've got the blades for the props, which are very nicely done, to be honest. The wheels, all right, they're a bit, and you know, not exactly going to win the awards for those, but they're not too bad. I think they'll probably work quite well. Um, as I say, watch my wheel painting techniques guide for that one. Okay, so what have we got? The clear parts. Right, this is the bit we want to see. It is two separate parts, how odd. Okay, so we'll start with the other one. Rear canopy, we've got no framing on this whatsoever. So, you know, you're gonna have to make your own up, but beautifully clear, no problem with things like that. Um, we've got the little light there, again, absolutely fine. I presume that's part of the, the gun system. That's nice as well. Okay, the rest of the HUD, or the gun side, I should say, I shouldn't say HUD. Okay, and other parts. Yep, they're all absolutely perfectly clear. Now, this is the interesting one. So, firstly, we've got a massive lump of flash at the back here. This bit you can probably see here at the top should definitely not be there. Okay, that's something else. That will literally just ping off, although I'm not going to do it now. We've got loads of flash down at the bottom, but to be honest, the part itself is fantastically clear. No problem with that at all. This is the weird one. So, you've got the front windscreen here. All right, with these two little legs, which is pretty clear, no problem with that, perhaps a little bit shaky. But then you get the armour glass, which then glues to the front. Now, the problem is going to be, is how do you actually glue that to that without ruining that? Crystal clear, trust me, go and buy crystal clear. You know, I love this stuff. This is my second pot of this I've gone through. Secret, thin it. Thin it with plain tap water, mix it up, make sure it properly mixes so you don't get like bits of spaghetti floating in it. And then you can actually just laminate stuff together, clear parts, and it will dry 100% crystal clear, and it is just as strong as if you've used it neat. Okay, but you could probably get away with just tracking it. So if you put it up against it, and then just little bits around the outside, it will track around it. But you're gonna need something that's gonna be crystal clear, because if you get any type of bleed on that, it's gonna be a, a bit of a nightmare. But it looks like, I don't know, there was a problem with molding it, so they've taken the most complicated route possibly for the modeler. It's easier for them to produce it that way. For, from our point of view, it's a little bit of a nightmare. So there we go. We are talking, as I said, 20 quid. So for 20 quid, it is a bargain. And you should just go out and get one for your stash anyway, because if you want a Spitfire in 30 second, it's a perfect choice for it. Because let's face it, then you're gonna go out for, I don't know, the next 130 second Hobby Boss one, is it? That's like 50 quid. And then you might as well tell you, I know you can pick them up for 80 quid if you're gonna hunt around, but generally, if you walk into a shop, you're gonna pay over 100 pound in the UK for a Tamiya Spitfire. And okay, the Tamiya Spitfire is the top of the range. You do get the full engine, you get absolutely everything, but we are talking about a standard 20 quid Spitfire 30 second. So this is a perfect kit.